Welcome to the History Makers Project. Could you please introduce yourself for us? Sure. I'm Bob Reeser. I'm Associate Dean for Research in the College of Education at Florida State University, and I was a professor in the Instructional Systems Program there for over 35 years. That's wonderful. Can you tell us a little bit about your career path? Where did you start? Sure. I started my graduate training at Arizona State University in the Instructional Technology Program there. And immediately upon completing that, back in 1975, I think how long ago it was, um, I got a position at Florida State and thought I'd be there three years. And here it is about 36, 37 years later, and I'm still there. And I've changed some of uh, um, my positions at Florida State, but I've remained at that university. So you were there for with some pretty big names in our, our Oh, field. sure, yeah. Tell to work with Walt Dick. Bob Gagne, Bob Morgan, Bob Branson, Roger Kaufman, those are some of the people who preceded me. And then of course uh, over the years we had other great names like Marcy Driscoll, Walt Wager, John Keller. So it was really a pleasure to be working with such big names in the field all those years. Excellent. Now let's go back just a little to uh, Arizona. Um, who was your mentor there? Sure. I had Howard Sullivan. Uh, he was my major professor there, and he, along with Walt Dick, were the two major mentors uh, to me throughout my career. Howard taught me how to be a good researcher, how to write up research, uh, great writer, helped hone my writing skills, how to be an effective instructional designer. I learned a lot of my instructional design skills from Howard. And still friendly with Howard to this day. We keep in touch regularly. Then once I got to Florida State and joined the faculty, Walt Dick really became my mentor there. Walt, with his design background and his straight arrow personality, give me a task and I'll do it, served as a really uh, good role model for me throughout my career. And Walt and I worked together on a variety of books, articles, projects, and he and I are still friends to this day. In fact, he and I are presenting here at this conference today. Oh, that's exciting. Tell us a little bit about some of the books that you have written. Uh, I've written four books. I, the first book I wrote was Selecting Media for Instruction. That was back in the 80s when the media that we had was quite different than the media available today. Um, and Bob Gagne and I wrote that book together. Bob and I were working on a project for the Army Research Institute, helping design instruction that would enable Army officers to design instruction and use the appropriate media for designing that instruction. And as a result of that project, we came up with a media selection model. Then he and I wrote a book on that topic. That was the first book I wrote. Uh, later on, uh, working with Walt Dick, I realized that the Systematic Design of Instruction, the book he had written with Luke Carey, uh, which was an excellent book, was like, most likely too detailed for teachers. And I always felt that teaching teachers how to use instructional design would be a very valuable thing to do. So Walt and I worked together on designing a very simplified a version of that book for teachers. I think the first edition of that was called Planning Effective Instruction. Um, we were happy with the book, but it didn't get uh, the use that we thought it would. So several years later, uh, we completely redid the book, uh, still focusing on instruction design for teachers. I think it was then called Instructional Planning, A Guide for Teachers, and that was the, the third book I worked on. And then most recently, and I've been doing this for now over 10 years, uh, I've worked on trends and issues in instructional design and technology with a former student of mine, Jack Dempsey, who's the University of South Alabama. That got started because uh, when I was teaching at uh, Florida State and Jack was a student in my classes, I'd use a lot of um, journal articles, recent journal articles, to inform students about recent practices in our field. And about 10 years after Jack graduated from the program, he said, Bob, instead of getting new resources every semester and finding journal articles, how about if we put together a book on trends in our field? And having been in the field so long, I knew a lot of the big names in the field and was able to call on them to write chapters on the various areas in which they had expertise. So in 2002, the first edition of that book came out. It proved to be pretty popular. We did a second edition in 2007. And the third edition with the 2012 copyright just came out recently. And a matter of fact, it just won the D&D &D Outstanding Book Awards. I'm really proud of that book, and uh, I intend to do a fourth edition in the not-too-distant future. Well, tell me, what was the primary focus of your work uh, and your research? 
Wow, over the years it, it changed in so many ways. Uh, uh, you know, some people keep the same research agenda for many years and go into it in uh, depth maybe their entire career. I've kind of jumped around a lot. Uh, I started out uh, when I was first a doctoral student, and then mostly in the first 10 years of my uh, career, once I became a faculty member, focusing on mastery learning, how we can get the range of instructional conditions that most of our students master the skills that they're taught. So I worked on that for about 10 or 12 years. So that was in the 70s through the mid-80s. Then when my kids came along, uh, my research uh, interest turned to things that were kind of relevant to young children. So for example, I did a lot of research on what children can learn from Sesame Street and how we can have parents interact with kids as they're watching Sesame Street so as to help them learn more. And then as my kids started getting into computer-based instruction and games, I started looking at how we can evaluate the instructional effectiveness of computer-based instruction. And Walt Dick and I created a model for evaluating instruction effectiveness of computer-based instruction uh, and examined how effective some games that were purported to be very effective were or were not. So uh, we worked on that for a number of years. And so you would you would say that your focus has evolved over time? And right. Yeah, I know. I, I, if you had to characterize my research in general, I think I'm, I'm really interested in coming up with practical solutions to real-world problems, more of an applied research focus than a basic research focus. And I think the areas I discussed with you will fit in that, that arena. That's, that's very helpful for the field. <laughs> um, now, how did you get interested in this field? What was maybe your undergraduate? Did you? Sure, yeah. Um, I originally thought I'd be a classroom teacher. But interestingly, uh, when I was student teaching, one of the problems that um, I found was I was spending hours designing a single lesson. Little did I know that my whole career would end up doing, doing that very thing, designing instruction. So um, I decided, you know, I'd like to stay in the classroom, but maybe not be a classroom teacher. So I thought maybe I'd become a school library media specialist. And I applied to a number of programs to, to major in that area. And one day I got a call from Arizona State. They had a joint uh, school library media instructional design program. And the uh, professor there, who's the head of the program, his name was Vern Gerlach, called and said, you know, we've looked at your records and we'd really like you to join the program, but we'd like you to be in the instructional design area. Well, I had no idea what instructional design was. Uh, I asked Fern, so what, what do instructional designers do? And he said to me, well, you know, uh, our graduates work in three areas. Some of them go into academia, some of them go into business and industry, and some of them go in as civilians working for the military. So I said, that's pretty good, I'll, I'll consider that. When I got out there, I found out they only had three graduates, one of going into each of the three areas. So I kind of fell into the field. And, but once I got out there to Arizona State and started taking courses and instructions on it, I saw that it was a really good fit for me, because it seemed to me that to be a good instructional designer, you have to be systematic, you have to be organized, things that I am, compulsive. You also have to be creative to be a good instructional designer. You can't just do very basic, boring instruction. And those are all things that I, all talents that I had. Plus, I'm a pretty good writer. So given those sets of personal characteristics and the, the characteristics needed to be successful as instructional designer, it seemed to be a good fit, and it's worked out really beautiful for me. Well, I have to, I have to tell you just a real quick story that uh, when I came down there and I was interviewing some of the students at Florida State, one of the, the I think it was one of the Coast Guard students said, that, that Dr. Reeser really walks the talk. And he said, that guy is a living example of what he's teaching. And he said, and at the end of class, he always sits down and writes out what went right and what went How wrong. How do you like that? Yeah, that, that's so true. You, you yeah. really impressed. Well, that's nice to hear. Yeah, I, I really always try very hard to practice what I preach. And I, I, often we get feedback to that effect. It's made me work even harder to do that. That's great. Thanks for sharing that with me. Sure. That's nice. Sure. How would you describe your research interests and uh, aspirations and how they were at the beginning of your program, your, your uh, career, and how they ch changed over time? Sure. Um, one thing that I've always been interested, as I said earlier, was, was you doing practical research. And I've talked about how my research has kind of been practically focused. Uh, another aspect of my job that um, I've always enjoyed, and this was an aspiration for my first time to uh, this field, was to be a good teacher. And I've really worked hard at uh, fine-tuning my teaching skills so that I am an effective teacher and that the students learn a lot of my classes 
and enjoy uh, what they learn. And that's been something I continue to work on to this very day. My wife often says to me, Bob, you've been teaching a course for this course for 32 years. Why are you staying up, you know, revising it tonight? Well, it's just me because I want to do a good job in the classroom. Another thing that I've really enjoyed, and I didn't know this at the beginning of my career, was taking leadership positions in organizations. I was a program leader of the Instruction Systems Program for six years. I was department chair for nine years. Uh, now I'm associate dean for research. And I really enjoyed when I have the opportunity to move a, an organization, a program forward in a certain direction. I really enjoy doing that and seeing the fruits of my labor, how the program becomes better, how the department becomes better, helping people in those organizations. So that's something that wasn't initially an aspiration of mine, but once I got into the leadership roles, I, I really started enjoying that as well. Sounds like you were moving people forward in their careers Yeah, as well. I, yes, definitely, yeah, and I, and I really like that, you know. Now, what were some of the major ideas or approaches that stimulated your professional growth? Sure. You know, I, I've always felt that the notion of have, being very clear about what your goals and objectives are is really at the heart of our field. If you know where you're going, then you can plan how to get there. So that's been something that's underlied all my, my teaching, a lot of my research too, knowing what I'm trying to accomplish, and then make, taking on uh, activities that enable me to accomplish that. Uh, a related notion is instructional alignment. The, the need to make sure that the things you're teaching are designed to help students acquire specific outcomes. And I, I, I really work hard to see that. I'm not giving students unnecessary stuff, that I'm teaching the things they need in order to acquire uh, certain skills. It's also important to motivate your students. So I, I work very hard to create enjoyable activities that will help my students attain the, the, the goals they have. Another key concept in our field that has underlied a lot of my work, again, this is mostly with regard to my teaching, is the whole notion of formative evaluation, which is a fancy word for trying it out, gather, gathering some data as to whether it works or not, and then revising accordingly. And as I said earlier, and I could be teaching a course for 30 years, and I can still go into a classroom, not get it right, but then take what didn't go well and revise it and make it better the next time. The last thing that's been real important, I think, in my professional development is being a good listener. As an instructional designer, you really have to listen to what the other person, we all enjoy talking, I'm enjoying that right now, actually. But also being a good listener, hearing what the other person says, and then be able to record that and use that information to help design better instruction. Plus, you, you gain the person's um, uh, confidence when, when, you, when they realize that you're listening to what they have to say. So those are some of the values or, or ideas that have uh, geared my practices in this field. And you, you mentioned your work with making sure that students get what the skills that they're going to need. Um, that kind of flows into your work on competencies. Can you talk about a little of your of your involvement in, in that movement? Sure, yeah. Uh, for the past six years, well, uh, I've been out of it for about a year now, uh, I was involved with IBSTIPI, the International Board of Standards for Training, Performance, and Instruction. I think I got that Very right. Good. And what we did during that period, at least what I did during that period, is work to revise the list of skills, instructional design, or competencies instructional designers need to be effective in, in the field. Uh, we just recently finished that work, about a year ago, and it'll be published soon, and it's an entire new list of competencies needed by instructional designers. And the Abstipi competencies, the previous editions, have been very widely accepted, and we're hoping that'll be the case with this set of competencies as well. And they're used pretty much across all different career environments. Yes, yeah, that's that's right. You know, business and industry, uh, military, where they have uh, people working in instructional design. Certainly, uh, higher education, academic programs gear their standards based upon the STIPI competency. So yeah, it's had a pretty broad impact. I'm hoping the next edition will do the same. Now, what were some of the most important trends that you felt were going on during your career? Well, of course, early in my career, I was really enamored with the notion of mastery learning and how we can design instruction so that most students will acquire the skills we want them to acquire. And I think a lot of those concepts are still relevant today, even though we don't hear the term mastery learning used very much today. Um, but, you know, it's interesting. Rather than talking about new technological innovations and so on, which all have had positive impacts upon our field, I, I like to always go back to the instructional design basics. I think the whole notion of being very clear about where you're going and making sure that your instruction is designed to help your students get there, regardless of the medium that you use, is really the key to success in our field. So I, I'm happy to note new trends in our field, I have a book on trends in the field, but I think it's those basics that set up instructional designers apart from people who just media 
professions. I mean, they, they play an important role, but without good instructional design, uh, the use of media is not going to make that large of a difference. Also, motivational activities. I think it's really important for us as instructional designers to design instruction that's motivating, that's creative, that will excite our learners and make them want to learn. So my goal is to get learners acquire the skills we want them to acquire and to enjoy it while they're learning those skills. And, and it, it's by being very clear about my goals and aligning my instruction to my goals that I'm able to do that. Um, what do you think of some of the more recent trends that have been coming out in the field? Well, certainly uh, in the past 10 years, online learning has had a major impact on our field. We're offering many more of our courses online, not, not just us in our profession, but in all areas of higher education now, even K-12, a lot of online courses. So I think that's a very important trend. I have some concerns about it as well, and that's the role that the instructor plays in the online courses, particularly in higher education. Uh, I think an instructor in a higher le uh, in an online course needs to work hard to make sure that not only the students interact with one another, but that the instructor provides good feedback and information to the students, because it's the instructor oftentimes has the, the knowledge and the skills that need to be conveyed. And I, I've noticed, uh, at least in some courses, a tendency on instructors to kind of lay back and let the students interact with one another without providing them the feedback and guidance to enrich uh, the experience. So I think online learning is a very important trend, one that's really opened up education to people who weren't able to get it before. But I think we really need to be very careful about designing interesting online courses, courses that promote a lot of interaction, but not just interaction among students, but among students along with faculty. Now, who are some of the people, you've mentioned it to you, but who are some of the other people that over the course of your career have impacted your growth and Sure. Well, as I said earlier, the two, the two major uh, mentors in my career, first Howard Sullivan when I was a student, and to this day, and Walter Dick. But in addition to that, I was so fortunate to end up at Florida State because there were so many well-known figures there, all of whom were just wonderful to me. Uh, Bob Morgan, who was the head of the Florida State Instruction System Program and actually brought all those big names to Florida State, was the person who originally hired me at Florida State. Uh, as an instructional designer, actually. So it was part-time faculty, but mainly as instructional designer. And Bob was really instrumental in giving me the opportunity to move forward. Matter of fact, uh, I have a named professorship now, and it's the Robert M. Morgan Professor of Instructional Systems, named after Bob, the founder of our program. The other figure, of course, was Bob Gagné. I had an office right across from Bob Gagné, and I, I couldn't believe, after having read about him so much in all my courses, that here I am in the same office suite with Bob. And I remember the first time Bob came into my office and said, well, Risa, what do you think about this? They actually asked me a question. I remember going home to my wife and saying, you're not going to believe this. Bob Gagné asked me a question today about our profession. And so uh, Bob was a wonderful mentor. Uh, we worked together on this book, Selecting Media for Instruction. He asked me to write a book. This was in the late, uh, excuse me, a book chapter in the late 1980s on the history of our field. Uh, he had a book called Instructional Technology Foundations, I believe the name was. And he was getting all these big names in the field to write for him. And me, he had only been out maybe eight, ten years. And he came into me one day and said, Bob, would you like to write a chapter for the book on the history of the field? I said, I probably can live this history. But you know, this is, I learned a lesson there because I took, I, I was reluctant, but I took on that task. And I tell my students this all the time. You know, sometimes you're given something that you think is a very steep challenge for you. But take it on because it can reap great benefits. And you know, as a result of Bob asking me to do that, I've kind of become kind of a, one of the historians of the field. And it was all because of Bob giving me that opportunity to do it. So again, uh, Howard Sullivan, Walter Dick, uh, Bob Morgan, uh, Bob Gagné were among the main people who were my mentors and, and helped me in my career. And t today, a lot of people I still work like Marcy Driscoll uh, have also been very instrumental in the development. Yes, who are some of those people like Marcy that, you, that you've collaborated with? And, sure, well, uh, I worked with Marcy, uh, several research studies together. She's written a chapter for my book. At Florida State, I've worked with Walt Wager and John Keller, uh, Bob Branson, Roger Kaufman, all those people. We've worked together designing courses, uh, doing some research together. And then I have loads of colleagues from other universities. Uh, Kent Gustafson, who used to be at the University of Georgia. Mike Hannafin, who was a student along, well, Mike actually studied at Arizona State a few years after me, but Mike's another one. Steve Ross, who used to be the editor of ETRND. I could go on, Dave Merrill, Don Ely, Jim Russell, I could go on 
naming 15 or 20 people who I've worked with over the years. A lot of them recently, with, with the, the various editions of my text, Rita Ritchie, who you just interviewed a few, a few minutes ago. So I'll stop right there, but I could name many more. It's, it's been a wonderful career. And you know, it's amazing, after you've been in a field a long period of time, you get to know almost everybody in the field. And uh, it's just a pleasure to see them each year, interact with them, and in my case, actually have them work with me as they write chapters for my book. That's excellent. Um, and what do you think is the greatest accomplishment of your career and why? Okay. Uh, I want to mention two things. Uh, one is when I won the University Distinguished Teaching Award. Every year at Florida State, they give out one award for the person who over his or her career has done an outstanding job of teaching. And I was the first one from the College of Education ever to win that award. And, and that to me was like one of my ultimate accomplishments because I've always felt, you know, I'm really devoted to my teaching. I really work hard at it. And to get that award, to recognize my accomplishment of the years, was, was something I was extremely proud of. Uh, the second thing is the Trends and Issues book. Uh, little did I know that when I first did that book that it would have the impact that it's had. Um, we've done several studies that have shown this book to be most, among the most frequently used books. Indeed, the most recent study, along with Walt Dick's Dick and Carey book, the most frequently required book in programs in our field. So I'm really proud of the fact that I put this book together. And I have to thank all the authors of the chapters, because I've only written a few chapters in the book, as has have Jack, but we get lots of others to write chapters. And it's because of the work of those authors and my uh, and Jack's putting it all together that that book has been as successful as it has. And I, to this day, get people come up to me and say, oh, Dr. Reeser, I really like that book. It's such a, so I'm really proud of that as well. Um, and how would you like to be remembered in the profession? Wow, that's interesting. Well, first of all, I, I hope I'm remembered as a, a good person, somebody who people enjoyed interacting with, who was a caring, hardworking individual, uh, who helped move his program, his department, his college, and this profession forward. And if I'm remembered in those regards, I'll be very happy. Well, thank you so oh, sure. much, Bob. This has been great. Oh, okay. oh it has been yeah, excellent. Thanks.